something in folly. You ever have to take that? That crew out there, do you think? Or been paid to scream like that. To scream. <laughs> <laughs> What's it been like carving a, a career after take that? Has it been? A, a, is it some blessing being with the group or in this situation? Or I think it was what? great being with the group to start off because. Um, I don't know, I think there's so many things that can sidetrack you from what you're actually meant to do. And um, as a group, with the, with the support of four other people, I think we all kept level-headed. But, but, but that kind of adulation that's, mm -hmm. that you've got, and you walked out there and there all these girls shrieking and screaming. <laughs> I mean, even, even, even worse than, than tonight. Um, uh, but, I mean, would it bound to sort of have an effect on you, isn't it? I mean, does it turn your head? Does it, Make you giddy? Did it make you sexy? Did it, I mean, what, what was it like? All those, I think. All those yeah. things. <laughs> um, it, it was great. It, really, it still is great. And, you know, I, I, how can you ever say you don't like it? Because yes. I, I think you always want people to like what you do. Um, and, you know, when I get an applause or whatever, it's, it's great. Because, I, I mean, I started in the clubs in England oh, and yeah. it was lucky to be listened to, never mind getting applause. <laughs> The clubs was, a, was a, a tough school for you to, to learn in, wasn't it? I mean, you started doing that at a very early age, didn't you? I was about uh, 11 when I got my first job really? as, as a piano player. And then when I was about 16, I was starting to sing by then. And, uh, but it was great because there's no, you know, recording vocals for weeks on end. It's one live performance. Yes. And, uh, you know, that, that really taught me everything I knew. And like I say, with the audiences and things, it's a great way to learn. You play some rough places, I guess. Yeah, played Barnsley. You played Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good one. But uh, I'm, <laughs> I mean, and, and of course, there's something to that. I think there's something strangely noble about those entertainers as yeah. well, don't you? I mean, we can all have a laugh at them and bad yeah. comics and that sort of thing. But you know, it takes some bottle to get up there oh, night and day in day out. To I used to hate the comedians and not not hate them i used to hate it when they used to die and uh th this this one night we were in a in a club and this comedian went on nobody listened to him all night and uh he come off after about 20 minutes and it was all of a sudden there was silence we were in the dressing room but we could hear silence and he went listen the bingo's on now there's silence <laughs> so um he ran out onto the stage, pulled his pants down and was doing this to everybody. <laughs> now you'll be quiet. And they were doing, doing a minute silence for someone who died the week before. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, so, we shouldn't laugh, should we? No, we shouldn't no, laugh, we shouldn't but laugh, I really we? laughed. <laughs> Yeah, but as you said, if you're going to survive that, then, yeah. then you, you learn something, don't you? You're, you're forged, Definitely. in a sense, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And you went from, from there into the, into the, the... Well, in fact, you, you went through a, a, quite a bit of rejection before you actually mm -hmm. got... Uh, there was a lovely story in research where I want you to tell about going to see Elton John's uh, publishing <laughs> company with your <laughs> demo was, disc. That's right. Um, I had quite a few good songs on this tape, like a million love songs, songs that were hits yeah. later on. And um, it was at Zomba Publishing, which is Elton John's publishing company, and this guy sat in the office, and he, he did the old trick where he turns his back on you, so you can't see whether he's tapping his foot, he's smiling, or whatever. Anyway, he played the whole six songs. I'd never got that far before. He played the whole six, this is it, I'm going to get a publishing deal. And he turned around, picked the tape out of the recorder, opened the window and threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I don't think I'll be getting a deal here, then. <laughs> A terrible thing to yeah. do. I told Elton actually later on. Yeah, he's yeah. been very supportive, yeah. Elton. Hasn't he's he? been he's been lovely to yeah. me. He's yeah. a good man. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about going into the into from that into that that huge success that that, that you had? I suppose it would change your, your your life overnight, wouldn't it? I mean, all sorts of things would start happening to you that never happened to you before. Travel and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I mean, I think yeah, definitely because I know that all five of us we hadn't actually been out of England when we joined the group. We were all the kind of nineteen, and we, I mean we'd been to France with the school and stuff, but we'd never actually been abroad. And I remember our, one of our first trips was Japan. Now, if there's one country that's their kind of whole religious, the way the way of life, everything, it's completely removed from the way we it's live. Got to talk, yes. And. Um, and we went there a lot. In fact, I, I actually had a girlfriend there for about six months in Japan. And um, she, was, she really wanted me to meet her family. And I, I was a bit nervous about it because they didn't speak English at all, none of them. 
And um, anyhow, I fl we flew in from England and I went straight from the airport to her house. She met me at the door. And the dad comes over and gives me his business card. <laughs> so I go, nice, lovely. <laughs> put it in the back bin. And everyone went, <gasps> And she said, don't put it in your back pocket. It's like sitting on his pride. So it went in the top. <laughs> Beauty, all right. So that was great. And next minute they said, we're going through to have some dinner. She said, he didn't say that. Uh, so everyone starts taking their shoes off. And I've just been on a 15-hour flight. from <laughs> three hours from the airport. I thought, this'll be interesting. It was like Parmesan cheese. <laughs> it was awful, believe it. We sat down for dinner. And you know the way they, they have those low tables and they kind of sit like this? I, I can't, I'm not very supple, and if I sat with my legs crossed, I'd fall backwards, so... <laughs> I was like on my side, like this. And I thought, I just, I, I couldn't eat my dinner, but I was going down sideways for my dinner. Was. So I kind of like, I thought, I'd just go to the toilet, and I put my chopsticks in the bowl of rice, and everyone went, Ugh! <laughs> that, that means death. <laughs> I, ne I never saw her again. Um, <laughs> that was kind of it after that. But, I mean, just a cultural shock yes. for, for someone like me. Yeah, yeah. And um, I learned quickly. Well, as you said, it's, it's a totally different society. It's, it's like another world. And yeah. It's like being on Mars, isn't it? Definitely. What about, again, the, the other thing surrounding it, we touched on earlier on, about, about the sort of hero worship. I mean, what, what must... I asked Jerry Halliwell this. What must it be like to go in a shop and see yourself as a doll? I, I'd seen kind of the drawing, but I'd never actually seen one. So I kind of, it was Saturday afternoon, so I went off into Chester with a bit of a cap on, some glasses. I was in the middle of Toy and Hobby checking out the dolls. <laughs> and I couldn't find my doll anywhere. <laughs> I was thinking, I've sold out in here. <laughs> There's hundreds of the others and I've sold out. <laughs> Lovely. So I went to the desk and I said, uh, have you got any uh, Guy Barlow dolls here? <laughs> and she says, um, no, you've got to collect Howard, Mark, Jason and Robbie and you send the coupon off and get Gary for free. 